have often asked ourselves whether it always has to be the more expensive bike. Can't you just save money and have just as much fun? This was the question we asked ourselves in an intra-brand duel between the Kawasaki C650RS and C900RS. Let's start with perhaps the most important point, the price. To make this comparison fair it is important to note that these two motorbikes are in two completely different classes. Ratings for performance, chassis or workmanship must therefore be seen in relation. Otherwise the small 650 could immediately go home. But how do they position themselves in terms of price? There is a difference of around 4000 euros between the 650 and the 900. How does the price difference make itself felt while riding? First of all, kudos to the Kawasaki design department. There is no need to compromise on the design of the less expensive C650 RS. Both cars are true works of art on two wheels and perfectly capture the retro spirit. It's not just the styling and the classic paintwork, the details are also elegantly solved. Primarily the analog instruments which house a centrally placed LC display. Kawasaki could have gone the easy route and fitted the TFT displays of the Sea Nakeds, but they wanted to give the old school vibe in the saddle as well. Bravo, Kawasaki. Let's talk engines. 68 horsepower versus 111 horsepower, is that even fair? No, of course we don't want to compare pure acceleration or top speed values. The 649cc in line 2 cylinder would not stand a chance here against the 948cc 4 cylinder of the C900RS. Nevertheless the 650 should not be underestimated. If you're looking for an absolutely predictable engine that revs cleanly right up to the rev limiter without peaks, this is the one for you. With its pleasant throttle response and the slipper clutch, which provides additional security when downshifting, this engine is a source of joy for beginners and experienced bikers alike. If, on the other hand, we start the inline 4 of the C900RS we move into a completely different realm. With a muffled sound that produces goosebumps as the revs rise, these 948cc go straight into the heart. It goes without saying that the significant increase in power compared to the 650 is clearly noticeable. What more can be said? Kawasaki knows how to build four-cylinder engines, and in the classic dress of the C900RS, this power unit feels right at home. How about the suspension? Once again, you get what you pay for. When you sit in the 820mm high saddle of the C650RS, you immediately feel the soft tuning of the suspension components. Nevertheless, Kawasaki manages to find a good compromise that doesn't make the retro bike seem underdamped in a sporty riding style. Heavier riders might test the limits earlier, but we didn't have to make any major concessions during our test. When you get on the C900RS with its 835mm of seat height, you immediately notice the difference. Instead of only having adjustable spring preload, the fork and shock absorber of the 900 are fully adjustable. But even in the basic setting, the C900RS seems much more grown up and manages the balancing act between sportiness and everyday comfort. As you can see, the C650RS does a lot of things very well, it's just that the more expensive 900 does them better. This is an absolutely logical conclusion, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go for the bigger bike. After all, at 187kg, the C650RS is much more compact and maneuverable than the 215kg C900RS. This makes it perfect for smaller and inexperienced riders or for anyone who appreciates the feeling of a small, agile motorbike. Big or heavy? or experienced riders are probably better off with the C900RS. It is a much more grown-up motorbike, with which even longer trips with two riders would be more relaxed. In addition, once the 900's power unit is up and running, you probably won't want to switch back to the twin cylinder. The only problem, you need about 4000 euros more in your bank account. But let's see what my colleague Wally has to say about that comparison. For me personally, the duel between the two retro cars is decided quite quickly. No, it definitely doesn't have to be the big one. In terms of looks alone, the big C900RS is inferior to the small C650RS, but not so much that it could be sidelined. For me, both machines look so clean and credible that I would like to praise Kawasaki for making the small C650RS look as if the engineers and designers had already assumed when planning the C650 that there would also be a retro-oriented RS version. That the C900RS with its greater attention to detail does it even better is worthy and right. Whoever spends over 4000 euros more also wants to get a better machine in all respects. But the instrumentation alone, with two analog circular instruments and a small LCD in between, is extremely well done on both machines. Which means that the small C650RS doesn't have to do without anything compared to its big sister, at least in terms of the cockpit. When riding, on the other hand, it is immediately clear which of the two you are sitting on. In fact, it is enough just to start them. The small inline two-cylinder of the 650 sounds rather tinny, while the inline four of the 900 sounds so sonorous. 
and throw it that for sound fetishists it would have to be the big one, the question of which one rides better doesn't really arise either. With 111 horsepower and 98.6 newton meters of torque, the Z900 RS is far superior to the Z650 RS with 68 horsepower and 65.7 newton meters. The chassis of the big one is also of a higher quality and the brakes are naturally better. In terms of electronics, however, the 900 doesn't stand out very much, it just has the standard traction control in addition. Given its sporty capabilities, I would have liked to see a quick shifter, but Kawa doesn't even offer one an extra cost. In terms of seating position, however, the two retro bikes are closer together again, and both are very comfortable and cozy, almost suitable for long journeys. The C650 RS even has a very soft, yet pleasantly stable chassis, and surprisingly good brakes. Handling is even easier than on the C900 RS thanks to the narrow 160 rear tire and the fact that it weighs over 30 kilos less. And I'm happy to repeat myself. No, it doesn't always have to be the big one, it can also be the small one. To be honest, my conclusion is similar. No, it doesn't have to be the big one. In fact, I would probably always go for the C650 RS if I had the choice. As much as the C900 RS excites with its great engine and higher quality components, the little one is more to my taste. Compact dimensions, lower weight and the narrow 160 rear tire give it the plus in maneuverability that I appreciate above all in everyday life, when it's time to go through town. In addition, 68 horsepower is enough for me to be quick on the road. In my eyes, the C900 RS has been a dream bike ever since it was presented. But now Kawasaki has simply created too much competition with the C650 RS.